for the double jump, we're going to want to head back on over to the player base class if you're not already there. We will need to change and track a few more details rather than just whether or not we are jumping or have stopped jumping. So you can see this kind of works because all of this is being tracked anyway, but we need to know a little bit more information. We need to know exactly what to do when this button is pressed rather than just letting the system do the jumping logic. So the very first thing is we can just unhook the jump for now and we'll call this a little bit later. The first thing we want to do is a branch check and this will be based on the return value of those values being tracked. So remember we've got the max jump count and also the current jump count. So the first thing we want to do is check whether or not the current jump count or jump count current is less than jump count max. Okay, so this tells us that we can already, we, can, we do have jumps remaining. We also have a can jump check here as well. So we could return this function, but this gives us specific information based on the, the count number of the jumps that we have available. Now this could be that we have zero jumps. So this might mean we haven't jumped yet or we might still have two or three remaining based on what we've set the max to be, which means we need another branch check here just to keep this nice and easy to read, separate this into separate branch checks. So if we are less than the maximum, which means we can still jump, and the next thing we want to check is whether or not we are falling. So remember that uh, character movement check we've used already. So if we look for is falling, we can get the character movement is falling function return, which is just a Boolean on whether or not we are in the air. And what we now know is that we have jumps remaining and whether or not we are doing this from the floor or the air. If we're falling, that means we're doing a double jump or a triple jump. Or if we're not falling, that means we're on the floor, which means we're doing just a normal jump. So what we could do is we could say that if we're on the floor, we want to do our normal jump. And if we're not, we're going to want to do the jump again. So at the moment, pretty much the same, but we will again be changing this for a more customized approach a little bit later. But in between this, we want to do something else. We now want to do something which is called playing an animation montage. So if we drag from here and search for montage, uh, we can see we have the play animation montage, which is based on the character. And we haven't created this yet, but this will be our double jump montage that we want to play. So what we want to do is we're going to go back into our animation folder. We want to find the uh, not jump in air. We want the double jump. So we have our double jump animation, which is essentially like another forceful flap, which makes it look as though we're getting that velocity from our body's movement. And what we want to do with this one is we're going to right click and rather than creating a, a blend space or something, we're going to turn this into an animation montage. So we'll call this one montage underscore double jump. I like to put it at the beginning rather than the end. And you can see that I've named all of my animations anim. So what we have is if we made a bunch of these, we'd have all of the basic animations next to each other, all of the blends next to each other, and all of the montages again next to each other. Now, what we can do is just double click into this and we can see it's very, very similar to what we've had already. We do have control over the blend in and blend out spaces. These are things you might want to increase or decrease if it isn't playing the animation as you expect. But besides that, we can leave everything at default as it is for now. And I think for this one, this will probably work as it is. So we want to come back into the player. We can see we can now plug in our montage double jump. And what this means is that we're now going to check. And when we start jumping, depending on how many jumps we have left, depending on whether or not we are currently on the floor, not only are we going to play this jump animation or play this jump function call, we're also going to play this jump animation. Now this won't do anything at the moment. So if we press play and we come in, we can see that we're still just kind of floating up. The reason being is we want to come back into the ABP underscore player. And remember that previously I said in the animation graph, there's something that we want to do in between here. Quite simply, we're going to pull off of here and we're going to create something called a default slot. So we're going to add a slot default. The source is going to again be based on the locomotion plugging into the outpost. We want to make sure that we keep the slot name as default. And this just lines up with the montage going into a default animation montage slot. And basically what this is doing for a brief summary is whilst the locomotion is playing, if a montage is played at the same time through something like the animation blueprint here, which is linked up to the mesh, and this class passes on information that the montage is about to be played to this uh, character mesh that we have here, then for the duration of that montage, this default slot will take priority. 
and that will be the output pose. So what we should see now is if we do a jump and then a double jump, we get that just the initial kind of double jump animation playing. And that's only going to happen once because we've got those checks in to make sure that even if the button is pressed, uh, as long as these values are being tracked, which they are by the system, until we land and that is reset, we're not able to enter into any more jumping states. So that's really as difficult as it needs to be to use an animation montage. We create the montage from our base animation, make sure that we have a default slot hooked up between our locomotion or your state machines and in between the output pose and that state machine. So nice and simple. We now have something again, it's all coming together now so we can jump around. It's very clear that we're double jumping rather than just doing additional kind of meaningless jumps or force coming from nowhere. It's always important in games to try and visually represent to the player what's happening. Even if it doesn't make sense, obviously, uh, when I say this means something, obviously it doesn't mean that we're applying force from just flapping our hand lightly down, but it looks as though to the player that's very clear that they've pressed a button and it's doing something new. So this is the basic implementation you'll see of double jumping. Uh, this is using purely the information from the character movement component and the values which it is already tracking. Now, like I've mentioned, you may have already started seeing where this is going to fail because this isn't reset until we've landed. So what we're about to do is look at the wall sliding in the next topic. And uh, obviously nothing's there at the moment, but what you might want are essentially, you'll see games tracking wall slide jumps as just standard jumps. And what this would do is this would cap us to the point where we cannot do any further wall jumps if this has been tallied up and is currently more or equal to the current maximum jump count. So that makes it a little bit unflexible, um, or it means that you have to roll a completely custom wall slide or wall jump functionality, at which point if you need to do that, it's probably best to do what we'll be doing, which is just rolling a completely custom jumping functionality, including wall jumps. So that will all again make a little bit more sense when we start looking at the wall jump functionality. Hopefully you've enjoyed that content. And just a reminder, if you wanted to get access to the full topics in this mini course, it's already fully available and uploaded over on Skillshare. I'm providing links in the description down below, which will allow you to sign up with a free premium trial. You'll gain full access to all of the courses over on Skillshare, including this 3D platformer focused controller topic. So be sure to check that out if you wanted to take advantage of the offer whilst it lasts. And as always, I just wanted to say a big thank you to all of the people supporting all of the work that I do here on YouTube, allowing me to keep making this weekly content. So a big thank you to all of the names scrolling down the screen.